its final exam week at Stanford Law School. A formality for many of its third-year students who already have job offers lined up. Of course they do. But just before exams started, one of those students, Nicholas Wallace, was told by the prestigious university that he might not get his diploma after all. What did he do that could throw his future into doubt? Did he cheat on his exams? No, although honor code violations at Stanford have more than doubled in the past two years. Did he lie on his application and try to bribe the school? No, although one prospective student was caught doing that in 2019 to the tune of $6.5 million, I kid you not. No, Wallace's alleged crime was emailing a flyer around to classmates in late January. This flyer, in fact. The Stanford Federalist Society presents the originalist case for inciting insurrection. It reads, promoting a discussion with Missouri Senator Josh Hawley, a Stanford law graduate who challenged the 2020 election results, and Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, who appeared at Donald Trump's January 6th Stop the Steal rally. Senator Hawley will argue that the ends justify the means, the flyer reads. And Attorney General Paxton will explain that calling on a violent mob to storm the Capitol represents an appropriate alternative remedy. And just in case that you couldn't tell that Wallace's flyer was a biting satire of pro-insurrection Republicans, he made the date and time of this non-existent event match the time the Capitol uprising began, January 6th, from 12.45 to 2 p.m. Quote, riot information will be emailed the morning of the event. Now, that's kind of funny. Unless you're the Stanford Federalist Society. They didn't like it. In March, leaders of that club first complained to the administration, the university administration, saying Wallace had defamed them. And then they renewed their complaint during the final week of classes, which is when school administrators placed a hold on Wallace's law school diploma. Hang on, what kind of school club, a school club, has that kind of power over a university? Well, the Federalist Society isn't just any school club. Founded in 1982 as a haven for conservative and libertarian law students, the group gets millions in funding from big right-wing donors like the Kochs and the Mercer family. What they get in return is a steady flow of conservative lawyers, judges, and politicians. Roughly half of George W. Bush's appellate court nominees were Federalist Society members. And Donald Trump did Bush one better, essentially outsourcing his judicial nominations to the Federalist Society. In fact, all six of the Supreme Court's current conservative justices have ties to the Federalist Society or were members. That's the kind of power that few K Street lobby groups could dream of, much less school clubs. Perhaps drunk on that power, many of the society's so-called originalist members, like Josh Hawley, Ted Cruz, and a prominent lawyer named John Eastman, had no trouble making up legal arguments in defense of Donald Trump's attempt to steal the election. That was quite an overreach, and so was trying to cancel Nicholas Wallace for pointing it out. This week, after some tough questions from journalists led by Slate legal reporter Mark Joseph Stern, Stanford decided that Wallace's satirical flyer was a protected exercise of free speech. He will graduate on time, and he should get his diploma. Still unanswered, though, is why the Federalist Society, founded to defend the Constitution, tried to revoke the First Amendment rights of a student who made fun of them. What snowflakes? Joining me now is Mark Joseph Stern, who covers courts and law for Slate and who brought national attention to Nicholas Wallace's case. Uh, Mark, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Two weeks ago, Stanford graduate Emily Wilder got fired from her new job at the AP when the college Republicans brought up some of her old social media posts. Now the university's Federalist Society goes after a law student. What is up with all this conservative cancel culture at Stanford? The hypocrisy here seems mind-blowing. Well, the hypocrisy is obviously outrageous here, um, but you have to remember that after four years of Trump and especially four years of Federalist Society judges flying onto the bench at record pace, college conservatives and especially law school conservatives feel empowered and emboldened to throw their weights around. They've long had this self-image as underdogs, which has not really been true given how lavishly funded they are and how much power they already had. But now Now they are at a new zenith of power, and it seems that, uh, as we now know, the president and two vice presidents of Stanford's Federalist Society chapter decided they would use that power to try to cancel Nick Wallace, as you said, for exercising his free speech. Uh, Apparently, the First Amendment is okay unless you make fun of the Federalist Society, in which case uh, it's totally unacceptable. I mean, it brings a whole new meaning to the whole campus free speech wars that conservatives invented not long ago. Uh, Mark, I talked a moment ago about the clout 
of the Federalist Society within conservative politics. Flesh that out for us a bit more. Just how influential are they in your view and how do they get to be so influential? Uh, so incredibly influential. Uh, the vast majority of Donald Trump's appointees to the federal courts of appeals have close ties to the Federalist Society, uh, and they were selected for that reason. Uh, as you noted, all three of Trump's justices are uh, Federalist Society members. And uh, what we've seen now is that every Federalist Society member who didn't quite land a spot in the judiciary uh, under Trump's presidency is now scuttling back to private firms where they are collecting a huge amount of money litigating cases that try to crush, uh, you know, human rights, equal rights, progressives, policies, and wait four more years until they hope they'll have another shot at getting on the bench. Um, I mean, the president of the Stanford Federalist Society, a guy named Paul Draper, already has a clerkship lined up with Chad Radler, a Trump appointee to the Sixth Circuit, and you better believe it, a Federalist Society member in good standing. So Paul Draper didn't see any problem with filing this complaint to try to shut down Nick Wallace's free speech, didn't think it would lead to any kind of jeopardy for his legal career because he's on that golden escalator that only the Federalist Society can really provide. And I feel like, I know we've already discussed it, but just one more time for the people at the back. This is ludicrously hypocritical from people who obsess over free speech and political correctness. Uh, though the power of the Federalist Society you've outlined for us, you mentioned, you, you just touched on their values a moment ago, going after kind of crushing of rights. I mean, in this case, a student's speech rights. In the case of Hawley and Cruz and society leader John Eastman trying to crush an election victory by Joe Biden, you know, overturning an election doesn't strike me as what constitutional originalism is supposed to be about. Even George Conway, who is a long-standing member of the Federalist Society, conservative liar, lawyer, he tweeted, quote, as someone who's been involved with the Federalist Society for over 35 years, I agree that this is totally ridiculous. Yes, there is a faction of the Federalist Society that uh, rebelled against Trump and spoke out against him, to their credit. Um, but the truth is that the vast majority of power players in the Federalist Society chose a very different route. They cozied up to Trump and his administration. They landed spots not just in the judiciary, but all throughout the executive branch and the Department of Justice. It was a Federalist Society member, a leader of one of their practice groups, who launched the effort to do a coup within DOJ, wherein the acting attorney general would step down, this guy would take his place, and then he would use the Justice Department to try to invalidate the results of the election in Georgia. So if you look at the key players in the insurrection, uh, in Trump's attempt to overturn the election, most of them have ties to the Federalist Society. If you look at the judges who are now crushing Biden's policies or preparing to overturn abortion rights or crushing LGBT LGBTQ rights. They are also connected to the Federalist Society, and they did not see fit to ever disparage Trump because they knew if they kept their mouth shut, they could get on the bench and be set for life. So the number of FedSoc members who yeah. did speak out against Trump, very small, infinitesimal. Yeah, sounds like the rest of the conservative movement. Um, Mark, you spoke with Nicholas Wallace, the student at the center of this story. What's next for him? And is there a concern that this could have a chilling effect on other future lawyers and civil servants? Um, yeah, so poor Nick, when I talked to him, uh, the hold was still on his diploma. He had just come out of an exam earlier yesterday. Uh, he was terrified because if he couldn't get his di diploma after graduation, he wasn't going to be allowed to take the bar. Now, thankfully, he has confirmed that he will get his diploma. He plans to take the bar in Michigan, and I believe he intends to do some kind of progressive litigation uh, that will help him fight for, for instance, the free speech rights of everybody not just conservatives and Republicans. Uh, we do need really talented lawyers to fight for free speech. We just need those lawyers to view free speech as something more than the rights of corporations to purchase elections. He could also have a side gig maybe uh, as a late night comedy writer because that flyer is pretty funny and original, I thought. Uh, maybe, maybe the Stanford Republicans didn't think it funny, but I did. Um, one last quick question, Mark. We're almost out of time. Why is there no democratic or liberal version of the Federalist Society? 
Well, one is money. So there's just not billionaires and dark money networks set up to fund a democratic version of this group. Um, but two, I think this underdog status, this cultish sense that we're fighting against everybody else, that has been very powerful and helpful to FedSoc. You know, students land at law school, maybe they're right leaning, maybe they don't have a particularly strong political view, um, but they fall in with this group and they say, you belong here, you belong with us. It's us against the world. We've got to fight for ourselves. We're the real victims. We're the discriminated against minorities. And I think that's a really powerful bond that brings people together, that helps to glue together this kind of network um, that allows individuals to lift each other up, to put them on that golden escalator and keep them going up until the top, until they are on the federal bench for life. The golden escalator. Now, there's a depressing image. Uh, Mark Joseph Stern, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for your reporting on this. I'm sure Nick Wallace is uh, very grateful. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen. And make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.